And essentially what you guys do is you have a virtual, it's virtual world environment for kids, correct? That's it, absolutely. It's uh, Moshi Monsters is the world of adoptable pet monsters, sort of a, a mix between Tamagotchi and Facebook for kids. So um, basically kids go on the site and they adopt their own unique animated little monster and then they can feed it and nurture it and, and look after it. Um, and then the fun thing is they can solve puzzles every day to earn currency, to go shopping in Monstro City so they can buy clothing for their monster, dress it up, uh, they can bling out their rooms and then they show off to their friends who they can chat with and play games with and uh, that's basically Moshi Monsters, lots and lots of fun for, for children. So what um, gave you the idea? I mean, obviously virtual and social networking, right? The combination of the two makes sense. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, you're having 70% of your users are actually girls. Yes. So is this because of the social um, aspect of your virtual world environment that is different than I, other sites that are out there? I think so, yeah. Girls of the age that, that uh, our game is sort of focused on are much more social than boys online, um, sort of 7 to 11. So I think that's part of it. But I think the biggest reason why most of our players are girls is because of the nurturing aspect. You know, there are a lot of very successful successful toys um, based around this from Tamagotchi to Furby to Neopets that have always skewed a little bit more female than male. So, um, but that said, we didn't want to create a game that was overly female, so that's why there's monsters which, you know, boys like the scary kind of zombie and abominable snowmen type monsters, and the girls like all the cute, friendly stuff. So we, we very much want to try and create it more 50-50 if we can. Now, is it open API where uh, people can actually build build things on top, layers on top for the kids to play with? So we, we'd love to do that and we may move to that eventually, but at the moment it, it's not, it's closed, because obviously dealing um, with an under 13 year old audience, you have to be very careful about mm -hmm. the content you put in front of them and the tools you allow them to use to communicate with each other. So um, safety is a, is a massive issue with us and we have a fantastic moderation team. Um, children in the future, they can, they can send in their artwork that appears in the Moshi Gallery um, and we want them to design items that appear in the world World, but it's not completely open at this stage. And the age range today is? So it's sort of 7 to 11 is the kind of, um, is most of our users. We do have some as young as uh, 4, and uh, we've got a lot of mums and grandmothers playing as well. Um, but uh, yeah, mostly 7 to 11 year olds. And what about the adoption rate so far in terms of, are you guys actually releasing your numbers in terms of yes, users? Yes, yeah. so we've grown, um, we've been live a little over a year, and in the first year we added about 3 million users through word of mouth, which we were delighted about. But we're kind of going through a bit of a scary um, tipping point at, at the moment, and last month we added another million users. It should be even bigger this month. It's remarkable. So it's just, it's gone absolutely nuts in, in the last few few weeks, which is really, really exciting. And I think, you know, that's down to the kind of viral nature of the site, and kids like it and then they tell their friends and uh, how long have you been live uh we went live in april 2008 so just a little bit every year i think one of the things that would be uh interesting right for the u.s market is the fact that you're um just over a year old um obviously you're funded by um Acel. we're yes. in their offices right now but um one of the things uh, in terms of viral growth a lot of startups use viral and they use social media as a way to get users mm -hmm. and and you just mentioned that you you tried uh, TV advertising yes. that's not something that a typical startup in Silicon Valley certainly would be doing within a year of launch so I find that interesting and also the fact that you had mentioned you got another million users as a result of some traditional um, traditional infusion of media here in the UK um, is that something you know you talked about moving into other markets mm -hmm. is that something that you decided as a sample to do in the UK because TV is still prominent here? It's, it's tricky. So I was, I was reluctant to do TV. You know, I'm a traditional online entrepreneur. I don't like spending money unless I have to. Much more rather spend all day optimizing and tweaking our viral loops. And, but we got a great new head of marketing that came on board and just wanted to test it out and see what would happen. And we were blown away by the results. It was phenomenal. I think, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a... Um, Obviously, with the recession, buying TV space is cheaper than it was. We were able to do a, a test for relatively um, little cash. And 
yeah, just staggered by how many users it brought in, but not just free users, paying users as well. I think children were watching with their parents. The parents then felt more comfortable with the brand, saw it was on TV, and were happy paying rather than just some random site their kids had, had been talking about. So it was a, a big, big success. I probably shouldn't be talking about it because we're giving away our secrets, and all other startups are going to start doing TV as well. No, but, um, not necessarily. Yeah, I think it's got to it be. It's, it's. I was just going to say. I think that. You know, I think that different uh, marketing uh, vehicles, right, um, and and tactics are actually going to work for different kinds Absolutely. of companies. Yeah. And, and so this may not be applicable to everybody. I mean, obviously, you're after a very, very, very um, specialized niche market. Yes. Um, and that's not the case with, um, you know, with most of the, the, the startups today. So, um, that's true. And buying kids... TV spaces is, is a lot cheaper than, yeah, prime time. So I think the key, any good startup needs to um, try a lot of different marketing tactics, spend a little bit of money on all of them, I place lots of little bets, and when something works, load up on it, and, and that's the, the best way to do it. Too many people are either anti-marketing or spending any money, or they just have their head fixed in one type of channel. And, um, yeah, I think the best... Like Twitter, for it. example. <laughs> well, yeah. As an avid tw Twitter user, uh, we both are, it yeah. seems so. Um, but it's, So it sounds like you're actually using a combination of traditional media and social media, which I think is the right thing to do in your case. Um, and Absolutely. so you're, you're pretty frequently on Twitter in terms of how are you using that? Is that to engage customers or is yeah, it more so to... Twitter is an interesting one. You know, not many of our players, our target market, are on Twitter. Um, but what we use Twitter for more is to communicate with the parents mm -hmm. and journalists and kind of opinion formers. And that's working quite well on that side. Bizarrely, we just started doing some Facebook advertising, which again, I've heard some, you know, not great stories about ROI, but... It, it seems to be working for us a, a week in. Um, and again, I think, you know, it's it's teenagers or um, college kids that are uh, intrigued by Moshi. It's very cheap to show ads and you're just paying per clicks. So it's it, it's proving an efficient form of marketing for us. Again, we just like experimenting with everything and uh, as long as it doesn't cost us much. Great. And where can people tune in for more information? So Moshi... M-O-S-H-I, monsters.com is the place to go. And it takes 30 seconds to adopt a monster and away you go. Super. Thanks very much. And thanks for spelling it for us, yeah. too. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Cool.